Hi, I'm Joan Lima, editor of The Economy, and here with me I've got Thomas Kovici, head of the Center by Sweden, and also Patrick Hulman, recently appointed CEO of the Nordpol. Um, hi guys, thank you all for talking to me. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Sweden, huge country when it comes to data centers in the Nordics and Europe, and it has a huge global footprint as well. Um, what has made Sweden such a huge place for data centers nowadays? Maybe we can get the government view first, and then we go to the industry view first. Uh, second. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, nowadays it's, it's fairly clear that data is our most yeah. valuable commodity mm. that we have. So we just feel that it's really important that, it, that we find places to store this data which is stable, you know, secure and, 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 lo and sustainable. So mm. that's really what the Swedish government has understood, that mm. we actually have those conditions in Sweden to, mm. to offer up to the to, to global data center players. Mm. Uh, from an industry perspective, how are you adapting to the new rea reality in Sweden? Because you are driving the innovation, so the government sort of understands this, uh, this innovation and builds up the environment for you to, to drive the technology. Yeah. So what are you doing in terms of technology as an industry? Yeah, well, what we're doing is, is that we, are, uh, we have been focusing on the data center mm -hmm. industry for, for years now and uh, uh, we are really trying to make it easy mm -hmm. for investors to come to Sweden. Mm -hmm. I mean one thing is that we have, you asked why is Sweden so good at this. Uh, one thing is of course the, the basic conditions, mm -hmm. the support by the government, mm -hmm. but it's also the, the, the Swedish culture mm -hmm. that makes people work mm -hmm. easily together mm -hmm. and, and working in projects quite fast and, and goal oriented. Mm -hmm. and then, sorry. Yeah, sorry, and that's why we have this initiative called Data Center by Sweden where we collaborate with the government and local governments and the industry mm -hmm. to make sure that we offer a very simple access to the Swedish uh, solutions. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it, it has to be very simple, it has to be prepared mm -hmm. so that investors find it very easy to find what you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, easy and also quick. I mean, I mean we, we are seeking out to both uh, reduce uh, risk uh, mm -hmm. for investors but also shorten time to market by preparing, make it easy to get the necessary mm -hmm. permits, etc. So it should be mm -hmm. easy if you want to mm -hmm. build something else. Really. And then we will talk about electricity and cool climate in a second. But when it comes to other things, sort of like tax breaks, it's not tax break, breaks, not just on daily electricity. What does the government do to help the data center industry in Sweden? What else is out there? I think the government is working on a, in a broad way with various questions that are related to the data center industry. <laughs> energy cost and energy taxes is, of course, a very important component in the business case for data centers. So there we have now made this new change of the legislation mm -hmm. to actually adapt data centers to the sort of future industries that are running on top of the uh, electricity infrastructure that was built for very high energy intensive industries. Really uh, equated the data centers with steel, uh, production, mining, uh, paper and pulp and so on. So it's realized that it's, it's an industrial process, it requires industrial grade infrastructure and that's what we now have to offer, including that low uh, energy cost. Okay. Basically, what the government did, government did was to reduce the energy tax on data centers to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was about ninety-seven percent reduction. Something yes. Like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So when do you, when would you say was a shift that the government understood that data centers would help future proof the economy when it comes to? The future? I, I guess it, it, it all started a few years back when, when Facebook decided mm -hmm. to invest in Sweden. So Facebook was sort of the, the change. Yeah, I, I think it triggered uh, yeah. yeah. for for a lot of people, including mm -hmm. people in the government, the people mm -hmm. in the industry, including utility companies and so on. Mm -hmm. And then I think we have gradually seen an increased interest uh, from government, from companies, etc. to work with this. Yeah. And now we have this national initiative, we are working together on, on the national mm -hmm. level to really bring this to the market. Mm -hmm. okay. And really trying to understand what different kind of investors mm -hmm. are out there mm -hmm. and what kind of solutions they are looking for. We know that one, one solution is not going to be good enough for everyone, so we have a a broad portfolio of solutions mm -hmm. that we offer across the country that can be suitable to, to various players. And how is the government using data centers, for example? How is the government itself making use of this innovation um, in Sweden? Any the program? Swedish government mm -hmm. is very sort of open to new mm -hmm. technologies and are pushing for various mm -hmm. technologies, but expecting that the market will come up with solutions, mm -hmm. that the government will use open mm -hmm. solutions presented right. sort of by the market players. So mm -hmm. there's no government cloud drive in Sweden mm -hmm. at the moment. Okay. And then when it comes to electricity, sorry, because you, you have also worked for Ventapal, so one of the largest uh, grid providers in Sweden. Yes. Um, What's the background around the Nepal and data centers? How are you working with data center players? How is Nepal working? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I will start from a different angle then. Mm. With the uh, electricity in Sweden, just to understand mm. the, the basic conditions. Mm. Uh, in Sweden, we have uh, 
for over 100 years we had really cheap, really efficient hydropower. And this is what provides the, the green and sustainable energy for the data centers at a very competitive price level. Uh, so what we're doing uh, in the utility industry is that we are making sure that we uh, shorten the times for getting the, the power connected. We're making sure that the, in the site selection process that you go to sites where you have an abundance of green power, so it should be quick and easy. Uh, and there really is an abundance of green power. That's what uh, we would like to give to yeah. the industry. Yeah. It's also, I think, uh, what is important to point out, one of the other drivers from the Swedish government and the Swedish state is sustainability. Uh, Sweden would like to stay ahead and we're really pushing the sustainability issue. We would like to be part of uh, the solution for uh, managing the climate change. So with the, the low carbon footprint that we have in Sweden, we believe that if we can move some of the data to Sweden, not all of it, I mean, we, we still have the major hubs in, in London, Frankfurt and so on, but if we can move some of that data into mm -hmm. Sweden, we will make a huge change from a mm -hmm. climate perspective. To sort of turn Sweden as not completely back down of Europe, but sort of yeah. holding on the data in Sweden, so giving Europe yeah. just with edge data centers and some mainstream data centers. Exactly. Um, okay. And then when it comes to skills as well, uh, what's the, the, the work the government is doing to ensure that people are getting educated to work in this industry? As we know, in the UK we know a lot more than Europe, but also in Europe, but there's a huge shortage of engineers, there's a huge mm -hmm. shortage of people that actually work in the data centre. Um, any university? We, 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 we can talk about the uh, research mm -hmm. initiative. Research, yes, mm -hmm. please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have in, in Sweden we have a unique uh, mm -hmm. research facility for mm -hmm. doing research on, on data centre and data centre structure, mm -hmm. and the, the sole purpose of that is to make sure to mm -hmm. to build a good uh, competence uh, in this area, mm -hmm. because we believe that if if uh, we are to do this, mm -hmm. we will also need this competence, mm -hmm. and we are building that uh, mm -hmm. from the from the ground up. Mm -hmm. with this uh, research and these mm -hmm. initiatives. And I think uh, the market forces mm -hmm. also create those re required companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sweden accounts for maybe uh, 40 to 50 percent of the Nordic data center market in mm -hmm. terms of size. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that there's a enough uh, people out there to actually operate these mm -hmm. data centers. Uh, interestingly enough also, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Swedes love technology, mm -hmm. so the uptake of cloud mm -hmm. is extremely good in Sweden. So mm -hmm. for example, normal IT budgets across Europe are maybe plus one or two percentage points uh, up, whereas the uh, cloud budgets in Sweden year on year are up 22%. So just that fact means that there are more and more people are moving into the industry and are sort of building competence for that industry. So, uh, and, and you can also look at this from, from a historical perspective because Sweden has a long industry tradition of innovation. From, from the, the, we invented the dynamite, the, the, mm. the zipper, we also mm. gave the world Spotify, mm. now we're also setting out to solve the data center mm. uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. for, for, has the Nordic region developed in the data center space? So we've got Phil in the World Data Center, uh, the marketing I think is expanding a little bit, Norway is expanding a little bit, Facebook is going to Denmark. How do you see this sort of moving landscape? Do you see it as a threat? Do you see it as an opportunity? It's great. I more think more it's great. Them. Every mm. new project in mm. the Nordic just mm. confirms that we have some inherent qualities mm. in the Nordics that mm. are really good for, for these type of projects. And I think there's more than enough mm. for all of us to share, mm. actually. And um, our ambition is just to make mm. sure that we, we offer up the proper specific solutions mm. to specific mm. investor mm. needs, because in the end, that, that's what's going to drive the. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think, I mean, in general, the, the focus, the, the good quality of life, the, mm -hmm. the innovation, the green mm -hmm. energy, we, we share that with mm -hmm. our Nordic neighbors. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really the entire Nordic that it is a good case for mm -hmm. data centers. Mm -hmm. And then you've also recently launched Stockholm Data Parks, mm -hmm. so which seems to be very disruptive in a good way. Um, because I think the, the, the outcome is to power Stockholm, at least 10% of Stockholm is hitting the need for but with the mm -hmm. data center heat. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about more about the project? Uh, just a few words, at least. Um, I mean, Sweden has been a pioneer in district heating and district cooling uh, globally uh, for, for many, many years. And the first data centers that actually traded excess heat in Stockholm were, it was in 1979. Mm. So we have a long tradition of, of 
have to be taken care of in ways to occur, mm -hmm. heating offices and, and, and nearby buildings mm -hmm. and so on. The district heating networks allow this to be done in a systemic way, mm -hmm. and that type of infrastructure you don't really have in many places around the world, mm -hmm. whereas a big part of the, the Greater Stockholm region has this district heating and district cooling networks already mm -hmm. in there. So you've got a number of data centers who already use cooling on tap, so cooling mm -hmm. as a service. Um, the the um, Stockholm Data Center project actually offers uh, free cooling for mm -hmm. any data centers mm -hmm. above 10 megawatts of mm -hmm. uh, size. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just the building on that am ambition to make Sweden and specifically Stockholm mm -hmm. and the capital a truly a sustainable and mm -hmm. carbon free city. Mm -hmm. Are you planning to expand this to other places of Sweden as well? Or it's no? The, I mean, uh, possibly, yes, because the, the, uh, the district heating system that Thomas is talking about is, is present in too. many places in yeah. Sweden. So, I, I mean, if there are data center investors mm. that are seeking to get good opportunities mm. and, and joint ventures mm. to, to get uh, these sustainable solutions, mm. there are good opportunities as well to do that. Okay. okay, Thomas and Patrick, thanks a lot for talking to me. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn as well.